Welcome to Revit Family Creation Basics Video 2 where we're going to look at how to quickly and easily simplify over detailed and over modeled Revit family files. One thing I want to point out before we dive into the video is that this is a video you will probably want to point your manufacturers to. And the reason for that is because manufacturers are notorious for over modeling and over detailing their Revit content. Now the reason they're doing that is they don't understand that overmodeled, over detailed content is something Revit users don't want to see. We want to see as simple, simplified content as we can get. Uh, for the manufacturers, if they want to be eye-catchy, go ahead and do that in the link to the content. So a good example is what we see here on the Seek website. That's what we're looking at right now, seek.autodesk.com. This is where Autodesk provides all the manufacturer specific content and we're looking here at a McQuay screw chiller and if I hover over the link to the content you can see they've taken a photograph of the actual equipment so that's as detailed as you can get if I select that link that will take me over here to the actual Revit file the actual Revit content that I'm going to download which looks something like this so here you can see that this is the here, here are the fans on top modeled nicely the box is modeled nicely as well um, they might have done a little bit too much down here underneath with the uh, square tubing. They could have done that with model lines as we'll see in the upcoming video. But by and large, they've got it right. They've got it informationally as robust as they can, but geometrically, it's as simple as it needs to be. You want it to put in just as much detail as you need to make the equipment identifiable. And it looks like they've done that well here. So now we're going to dive into the video itself. All right, so here we are in our typical Revit project file. And this piece of equipment up here, the chiller, is the one we're going to be looking at today. This is the piece of equipment that was over-modeled, over-detailed, whatever you want to call it. We've got the fan covers modeled on there. We don't need those. We've also got the square tubing underneath modeled, which we don't need. All of that because the more detail you have modeled geometrically, the harder Revit is going to work to track all of that. It's going to bog Revit down. Informationally, we want our families to be robust and have the information they need. But geometrically, we want to convey just enough information to be able to identify what the piece of equipment is. So what we need to do is edit this piece of content here, this family, and how do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you right click on that and you come down here, you can see we have Edit Family. When we do that, we leave the Revit project environment and come into the Revit Family Editor environment. So that's where we are right now. And now if I select on this piece of equipment and come over here to Properties, I can see that I have an air-cooled chiller.sat, so a standard ACES text file, meaning that this is some piece of geometry that came, 3D geometry that came from another platform somewhere like Inventor perhaps, but wherever it came from it was over-modeled. The fact that it's an SAT file is fine. I could leave it because of that, but because it's over-modeled we need to fix that. And it's just to see how over-modeled this actually is, if we come in here and go to Shaded with Edges, you can see that it, Revit's trying to track all this geometry, so we've got eight of those times however many units we put in the file is going to start bogging Revit down. So how do we fix that? We just create simple geometry and model and draw over it with uh, detail lines or model lines. So let's do that. So the first thing I want to do is replace the entire box and to do that we need to place an extrusion but before we do I want you to note that we have work planes over here. We can set a work plane and turn work planes on and show them and <clears throat> if I right click on either of these you see I can add them to the quick access toolbar which I've already done that's why that was grayed out so I'm going to show the work plane and it appears that I'm on the bottom but I'm going to go to a front view just to make sure and it looks like indeed I am on the bottom so there's that and that's where I want to be so now all I have to do is create that extrusion so over here once I select the extrusion tool I come over and select a rectangle and place that rectangle on one corner and the other corner. SE will get me snap endpoint and I happen to know this is 2133 high so when I finish I now have a piece of geometry that replicates the entire box. What's more is I want to come down here and also create this piece of geometry here on the end, this little piece sticking out. So again all I have to do is come in and set the work plane I want in this case I'll pick a plane rather than coming up here and trying to find a plane that fits because I know I was on the reference level I also have center front back and center left right neither of these is the one I want so I'll pick a plane 
say OK. And as I move over this, you can see that Revit is looking at different planes. This is the one I want right there. So now I'm on that plane. We'll go to the end view, back over to the home tab, extrusion, rectangle again, and I just pick these endpoints. Now it doesn't matter. You might wonder, well, which endpoint are you getting, the front or the back one? That reference plane is driving the fact that I'm going to get the back one. Also, these lines now are going to, I want these lines to remain where they are. So I'm going to lock each one of these lines. If these lines were to move, in other words, I had different sizes back here, then I would control this with, uh, with uh, uh, dimension lines, and then I could create different types later on. But for now, I know that's what I'm looking for. And I also happen to know that this height is uh, 203.2. So if I finish that, I get this end geometry. So now that's on there. And now what I want to do is put these grills on the top. And the easiest way to do that is just come to a top view. We need to pick our plane, so let's stay in a 3D view for a second. Select our plane, pick a plane, begin to get the idea. So now I'm on the top and <clears throat> need another extrusion. In this case it's going to be circular. SC, snap to the center, out to the edge. And this one's also 203.2 to the top of that. So I can finish that. Now that you see I have a piece of geometry, and actually so you go to the front view, you can see that this geometry goes all the way to the top of that grill, which is what I want, because you always want your geometry to take up as much space as possible so the interference detection works right in Revit. And then, one last time, we'll reset our work plane now to the top of the disk I just created. And now I can start drawing the circles on there that I need to depict the grill. So if you want to depict the grill, don't actually create extrusions up there. Use model lines or you could use um, symbolic lines. In this case I want model lines because I want it to be viewable in whatever, whether I'm in 3D view or plan view or whatever. So I'm going to use model lines, circle, and do center to there, center to here, center to there, and center to there. All right, and that finishes that. So if I come back now, and let's turn off the visibility, and let's delete this unit, Again, understanding that I'm going to put model lines down here for these rectangles and so forth. If I delete this unit, you can see I'm already recreating that geometry. I can put the lines across here and so forth to actually create the crossbars if I want them. But I still have the geometry I need that takes up the space. I have the connectors, everything I need here. Once I get all this work finished, I'm going to come up with something that looks more like this. And this is my completed chiller. So this is the chiller after I've done all that work. I've finished drawing the model lines around the edges and the bottoms and so forth. So there you can see I've got the actual completed unit. I've deleted the SAT portion of it now. And this, now I can load this back into the project. And it asks me, do you want to overwrite the existing version and its parameter values? Because we did change those connectors. So I'm going to say yes. And when I do, you can watch this magically change to the new unit. So there you have it. Now we have this change. It's much more simplified. So this is a quick rundown of how you can take existing files that have been over detailed and over modeled and change those into files that are sim more simple geometrically and are more accurate informationally and is more robust informationally. So this is going to help you to get your Revit files running more smoothly. So thanks very much for joining us.